All right. So today I'm going to look at comparing Dungeon Draft with Dungeon Painter Studio. It's a Dungeon Painter Studio version one that is. All right. You can see Dungeon Draft is here on the left. Dungeon Painter Studio is on the right. These are the two tools I use most often when making maps. They both have their good points and not so good points. All right. First big difference. There's Dungeon Painter Studio just gives you this giant grid to work with right off the bat. Dungeon Draft, you have to either open an existing map, which we're not going to do, or create a map. We'll just create a, a huge 100 by 100 tile map. You can choose one of these templates. We're just going to specify its tile size and hit OK. Also using all default art assets for this. All right. Zoom this grid out. All right. So let's create, try to create the same map in both things and see how they differ. So first let's start with some ground. I want to do path in the woods. Let's see. It's kind of like the hand painted grounds here. Let's start with this. I'm just gonna make big let's do a just a big chunk of ground there. So there you see we just we click the tile we want, we leave it on the ground and fours. In this case we just use a rectangle and build a big rectangle. Dungeon draft. We go to terrain. We can use a terrain brush or, or we can just set so let's settlement. Rainforest, mountain, let's see any specific. Let's change to the rainforest and see what we get. Um, that'll work. It's a nice green grassy field. All right. So now let's put some trees here. So up here we go to objects. Let's see the switches. Go to outdoor. Let's see, are there any trees here? No. There we go. This one has a specific trees. Let's see. And we also have different art sets. So let's go to, I think Fairy Valley has art for the trees I prefer. Here we go. So we can click on that and we can place individual objects. Not sure that's really what we want. The mouse wheel scrolls in and out on this, whereas on Dungeon Draft, you have to hold control and use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out. Well, that's for putting individual trees. Let's see, we want to put multiple trees. Let's switch this to a brush. And just kind of brush the trees in there. That doesn't look too good. So let's undo that. What you can do with Control Z or clicking this undo button over here. Let's change the trees to a random angle and then change the frequency a little bit. You can also scale the trees to make them a little bigger. There we go, that looks a little better. If 
probably still a little too many trees in a row. I mean, we want this to be woods, but. Alright. Let's put our trees over here. Do an object tool. In this one, we can actually use a tool called Scatter Tool. And we can search for our trees. Let's use these trees. Make Dungeon P. Dungeon draft a little bit bigger here. All right. So if we click multiple trees here. We click it; it will actually pick random trees out of the selection we picked. Then we can place. Or we can just hold the mouse down and move, and it will put extra trees down. Right. Or we can go to Object Tool and just place an individual tree. Use the mouse wheel to rotate, Alt, and mouse wheel still scrolls in. Right, that's Control and mouse wheel. Alt and mouse wheel changes the size. Oh, mouse wheel for rotation, alt and mouse wheel for scale. Shadow is on or off. In there. Alright. Then if we wanted to move these trees around. In Dungeon Painter Studio, we click our move, and then we find the tree we want to move, or the brush stroke, and we move it. So, a brush stroke is all one object. There's an individual tree is one object. In Dungeon Draft, we click a similar looking move tool, and we can find and move any of these. Even with the scatter tool, everything is still a separate object. All right, let's paint a, a path in here. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and use the terrain tool. Give ourselves a uh, nice little dirt path. You can select the size of the brush here. This big brush here, draw a paint a dirt path there. Now actually I'm going to take that dirt path and I'm going to move it up a little bit. Also kind of fill that in by clicking edit. That brings the brush back. And then we want to click the enter button when we're done. There are some technical issues with Dungeon Painter Studio sometimes. So you definitely want to click enter when you're done to tell it that you're done with the brush. If you attempt to change the tool without clicking enter, the software will become mildly confused and then you'd be best off saving your work, closing it, and opening it back up. I've learned that from personal experience. Alright, so let's go back over here and we'll grab a terrain brush, grab some dirt. We notice the brush over here has a brush size setting similar to the brush size setting we had over here. This one also has an intensity setting. So let's set the brush size to four. Click and brush. So it's a nice dirt path there. Notice the terrain brush goes right under the trees. 
Whereas in Dungeon Painter Studio, if we were to take this, it can be under the trees, or if we bring it to the top, it goes over top of everything. So we're going to bring it down to the bottom and put it just above the ground wire. All right, so there's our dirt paths. Now let's build a small little hut for building. All right, so first let's build our building here. We will go ahead and use the wall tools. Just build. Scroll in a little bit. The panning is different in both two. In Dungeon Painter Studio, to pan, you use the right mouse button. In Dungeon Draft, to pan, you hold the mouse wheel in. Alright. We're going to lay out our building here using the walls first. Always use, usually click this allow half so it'll snap to half points on the grid. Alright, and once this wraps back around and you click it, we'll complete it as one object. Notice here it happened to be under the path, so we want to bring that up. There are three different wall tools here. Well, actually, one just creates an individual line. Once you click to finish it, it creates a line, so we're going to remove that. And then there's one we used, polyline. We're going to go ahead and use this arc here to give the corner of this house a little circle. I'll click the two points move it out to the size you want, click enter to finish that. Another thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab both of these walls, I'm going to group them into one layer, which you can then go into. And I'm going to take this, right click and add to ground. And then I'm going to right click and add ground. And what I like to do here is grab my two, or grab my ground, group them together, and then cut them, go back up one layer, paste them, and bring those over here to where the walls are, and then I'll grab these and group them into the building. And I don't like this ground for the inside of the building, so I'm going to go into the ground and I'm going to edit that. And let's change it to... Let's change it to this more rustic wooden flooring. Change this one to the same one. There we go. So you build your walls, you right click and add your ground. You can also do the inverse and build your build your ground, right click and add wall. I tend to build the wall first and then the ground, but you can build the ground first and then add the wall. Let's go ahead and remove those. Alright, so now our building is here. Let's slide it over half. Okay. Now let's go into the building, into the walls, and let's break this up into a couple of rooms. That'll be the front door. Press enter. 
her to finish the line. Turn this into a couple of rooms. There we go. I like to keep the walls and the floors in separate layers. I'm going to objects. Find a door object. So uh, let's just use this. Put a door here. Let's bring the doors over the wall so we can see it. Door here, door here. And as you can see, they're going underneath the walls. So let's grab the two doors. Actually grab all three doors, group them into another layer, and then move that layer above. Alright, and switch back to the object tool so we can place another door here, and a door here. And you can see I forgot to go back into my layers, or into my door layer. So I'll just grab those two doors, cut them. Go into the door layer, paste. Now let's grab some other interior objects to decorate this a little bit. Alright, yeah, let's give it a fireplace is a little big. So let's scale the fireplace down. And let's a quick rotate and put it here. I don't like the fireplace being above the wall, so let's bring it below the wall. And then the snap to grid brings it outside of the wall, so let's undo stick to grid. Put the fireplace exactly where we want it, and then I'm going to turn stick to grid back on. I'm going to group the fireplace back to this. I'm going to double click and do objects. Hit enter. I'll decorate the rest of the inside of the house with some simple objects. Shrink the couch. I'm going to lock the scale so that everything is appropriately sized. You can also do a custom angle. Let's see, let's find a bed. There's a nice bed. I do custom angle. Normally I would have spent more time on the scale. Let's let's say this is storage over here. Do a random angle and grab some green sacks. You just click a few times and we'll put that item there random or we could, just like with trees. Sort of paint. Now keep in mind if you hold the mouse button down the entire time you are painting that, that whole brush stroke is one object. Alright, and let's just put Shelves here. Normally, I would work at a larger scale. I would have made the building bigger and fit things in nicer. But I think this suffices to get the point across. Okay. 
So there's our building. There's our trees. We can actually take all these trees, group them. Trees. And if we So if we wanted to make the trees invisible for any reason to see what else we were doing, everything is a separate object. It's all on its own layers. And the layers are completely movable and customizable as far as what thing is on what layer. Now let's try to replicate that building in Dungeon Draft. So let's go to our building tool. We mostly used rectangular shapes here. Let's see, that was about three squares there. Two, three, four down. You can see building a building in Dungeon Draft in some ways is much faster. Let's grab our circle, we click a point to start, and then we just drag out. Okay. Now we want to switch to our wall tool. Zoom in to make sure we're grabbing the right kind of wall. Let's click and put a wall in. That wall doesn't look right. There you go, wood wall. Let's undo. Put a wall there. This is not going to be an exact match, though an exact match would have been possible. Do notice that the snapped grid here does not have the half point option. It's either snap to the grid or do not snap to the grid at all. Which is fine. can still snap them in diagonals. Alright, so there's our walls. Now, let's put our doors on. Whereas everything in Dungeon Painter Studio is an object, here, the doors are portals. And they snap right into the walls. And we'll see why that is. Hmm. Here's an issue already. I can't put a door right here because it won't fit on this wall properly. So what I might do is go back and click this wall and then just click delete and get rid of it. Now for my one major gripe with Dungeon Draft. Alright. So say I don't like where I put this building and I want to move it a little further up the path. Dungeon Painter Studio I grab my building that I've grouped all my stuff together, I click my move tool, and I move my building. Move it up a couple squares, move it down a couple squares, I'm just going to move it up. I can even click and rotate and rotate the entire building. Now dungeon draft, thing I do not like, I don't like where this building is. 
because these trees are in the way. Click the move tool and I can click individual pieces of the building. But when I click and drag, I cannot move the building. I can move the trees. So I can move the trees out of the way and still accomplish what I want. But I can't just grab and move a building. Not a huge deal on this map. There's only one building. But if I was building a whole town and I decided I didn't like where I put the butcher shop and wanted to move it to another spot on the map, I would not be able to just move the building. I'd have to delete the building I created and build a new one in the spot I wanted it. Now you can make modifications to this in a way that Dungeon Painter Studio does not allow or doesn't do quite as easily. So say, go back to my building tool and I want to take a chunk of this away. I hold Alt and you see the dot turns blue and then I draw the shape that I want to cut out and I let go and it cuts that shape out. If I wanted to cut that shape out in Dungeon Painter Studio I would have to go into the building, go into the wall, get the wall object, edit the wall object, duplicate the points, let's put stick the grid back on. drag these points around to where I wanted them. But you can see one issue that I don't have a lot, very often, is if you start moving something without stick the grid on, when you do stick the grid, where it sticks will be relative to where it started, not where the actual grid points are. All right, let's press enter to say we change that. Now we'd have to go in and change the floor. Let's double check that that's the right thing. This is the floor we want to edit. And then we'd have to duplicate points, make them match with these are. And I think you get the gist of it. You have to re-edit each object, whereas Dungeon Draft treats the floor and the wall as both just part of a building. It draws the floor in for you, it cuts the floor out for you. You can select what kind of floor you want there. You can mix and match floors. When you're doing a building tool, it will always assume that that's the external wall. So, see I drew an individual wall inside here, but if I draw a shape with the building tool here, it's going to ignore that individual wall I drew and change where the outer wall is. Go ahead and undo that. Let's uh, grab some objects in here. Grab bed. Gonna scale that bed down a little bit. Put it in there. Fireplace. Right, rotating. An object can be rotated freely with the mouse wheel, or 
you can right click to rotate by 90 degrees. Again, this is being on snap to grid. It was a little further to the wall than I'd like, so I'm going to turn off the snap and just put the fireplace there. Alright. We've got our buildings, we've got our path. Showed how that path tool and the buildings work differently. Now I mentioned the moving the building was my one major gripe with Dungeon Draft. My other issue is the way layers work. Let's see, where's the layers tool? Um, right, so let's we choose an object. Dungeon Draft has preset layers. Different things go on certain layers, and some are completely uneditable. As in, terrain always goes on the terrain layer. You cannot move it to another layer. Caves always go on the same layer. Any of these grayed out ones. Building floors, water, portals, walls, roofs. Always go on those layers. So if I grab this terrain... It doesn't even see. It does not give me an option for a layer for the terrain. It just goes on the terrain layer. Building tool. No layer option. So I can grab an object. And I can pick which one of these layers. So let's grab... Um... Let's just scroll through here and grab something to put in the building. Let's put a... Let's put a chair. Put a chair here. There. I notice I put these on layer one. Now I'm going to grab a table. Grab a wooden table. Now see, it's still on layer one. I have over, it's showing over top of these chairs because I put the chairs on layer one. If you click under, it shows under the chairs because I have the chairs on layer one. So I mean I really want the table on over so the chairs would be under it. But let's say I accidentally clicked under and put a table underneath this chair. Now if I go back to my move tool and grab my table I can change what layer the table's on and I bring it front or back this way. I think this might be a somewhat recent update because the last time I spent a lot of time building a map in here, I do not believe this option was here. So it's nice to see that this is doable. And then if you put something over or under by accident in, within a layer, that you can fix that. And you can move it to another layer. Somewhat unintuitive is the higher number and the lower in the list, the higher up it physically is in the layers. It's obvious if you read the name of the layers, but I would have thought that they would have listed them in the other direction with above roofs all the way at the top and the terrain all the way at the bottom. Not a big deal. These objects are quick and easy to manipulate. They can be placed in various layers. So 
So we've compared how our terrain tools work, we've compared buildings, we've compared walls, we've compared the portals versus the doors. Our terrain brush, we have a separate water brush tool here. In Dungeon Painter Studio, if we wanted to paint water, we would just use the same ground and floor tool that we use to put down any other terrain. So this is kind of neat with the water brush where we can draw in a body of water. Square is probably not really the best shape for that. Let's do let's just grab a brush and just paint a body of water over here. It's also kind of neat that the water is animated, though when you export it, obviously if you export it as a JPG or PNG file, it's not going to show animated in those. We've got your water colors, your blend distance. So it's a neat water tool. Whereas if I wanted to draw a little pond like that over here, I would grab terrain tool and I would find a water texture and then I would just paint it and it's an object that I can move and layer all right Here's where there's one thing Dungeon Painter Studio has that Dungeon Draft just doesn't do, which is effects. Now Dungeon Draft does shadows, but effects are a little more involved. So let's go into our building and I like to take the walls and the effect I like to put on the walls is the preset long shadow. And then I like to take the objects and give them a middle shadow. I realize the fireplace is out of place here, but I'm just pointing out different tools and how they work and comparing the two. Now let's say I want to take this specific object. Oh, I gave the doors the middle shadow. I wanted to give objects middle shadow, give them a little bit of depth. Well, let's say I want to do something special to this couch. So I go to the couch, I go to effects. Here I can create a new preset effect. Just give it any name. I'm going to apply it to the couch and edit. Well, now I can add any of these effects to the couch. I can give it a drop shadow and then change the various... Let me zoom in here so you can see what this does. So I can change the angle of the shadow, distance of the shadow, make the shadow shine or be shadowy into the couch instead of out of the couch. And you've got your bevel, which probably won't really be very noticeable on the couch. But you have various effects to play with and create and combine the settings to give you a lot more variety in what you can do other than just click shadow on off. Sure it looks better with the shadow but there's not really much you can do with that. I can't give it an extra bevel. I can't do anything to give it more depth within Dungeon Drift. Obviously you could export the file and create more in-depth shadows in Photoshop but I want to work directly in the tool as much as possible. 
No, I've made a lot of maps with Dungeon Painter Studio, and I've used a lot of these effects to do a lot of things I wasn't sure I'd be able to do without the effects to get the requested job done. Now, what Dungeon Draft does have that Dungeon Painter Studio simply does not do, or at least version 1 does not, is light effects. So let's grab light, and we can put some light coming out of this fireplace, and we can change how intense it is. Put a light object there, and you notice the light can be blocked by the portals. Or... If we were to select this portal and allow light, and then go back to our light tool, we can have the light shine out through the door. And we can change our entire environment of ambient light to whatever color we want, which is cool. So you can easily make a nighttime scene or horror movie red pitch dark in the woods it's neat I mean I'm not sure why you'd want it pitch dark if you you know spend all that time creating the rest of the map but maybe you just export this as a a piece and then use the rest of the map for reference But the light tools are cool, and they're just not there in Dungeon Painter Studio. Dungeon Painter Studio 2 does have the light tools, but I don't think it's quite there yet for real practical use of anything. Alright, let's accept that light color. Let's see what other things... Alright. Other thing that I'd like to compare, say I want to build another level. Now let's say there's a basement. I want to build a, an underground basement. I would go in Dungeon Peter Studio, what I would do is I would grab all this, create it as one group, do ground level. And then I would grab, let's see, I'd grab the terrain, make this invisible, grab the terrain, do, uh, let's see, let's grab some dirt, and draw, you know, draw it underground dirt. Right, drag that down so that the ground is above it even change the opacity of the ground level so you can line things up over top. Let's say the stairs are in this corner. I'm not going to put the object there at the moment. I'm just going to assume they're there. And then I can draw into the plot. Group this. Name it. Underground level. Into it. Grab this. Let's uh, let's grab some. Let's just grab a set of stairs. Set it to. Let's let's put it in this direction. Grab the stairs. Grab some flooring. So that's where I want the stairs. So then I'll make the ground level invisible so I can see what I'm doing here. Go back into the underground. I'm gonna draw some gonna draw some rocky walls to kind of mark out where this is. Make these a little thinner so I can have some branching paths here. What do you know? There's 
a network of tunnels underneath this house. Going off into who knows where. Alright. So I go back here. Then I can make each floor visible or invisible. And when I export, it'll show me the visible one. Make an invisible export and do that level. This way, if you have a building that's got a ton of levels or any other map that just has multiple levels, you can, and you can quickly rearrange the levels too. So that's pretty easy to work with. Now, Dungeon Draft, if I want to build a new level, its tool's actually pretty decent at this. We have to go in here, go to Level Settings, by default, there's just this one level named ground. So I'll we'll add a level. Let's call it underground. You could choose to copy a level or just start with a blank level. And we'll switch to creation. So now we're at our different level. And we can't see the level we already created. Actually, what we're going to do is drag this underneath. You can click Compare Level. You can edit the opacity of the level you want to reference. So that's not too bad. Ah. Thunder Draft does also have one other really neat tool here which is a cave brush. So I just want to draw a cavern. I'm going to change the brush size as I go with my mouse scroll wheel. Which is pretty neat that you can do that. And when I let go of the scroll wheel, it puts the walls around it automatically. I can grid my objects. Grab some stairs. Once I can spell stairs correctly. Grab these stairs. Comparing the levels. Let's put it there. Let's go over level settings. Alright. This doesn't seem to affect anything as far as comparing the levels. the opacity of both of them so we can really compare where they line up. That's pretty cool. It's neat. Unclick compare. And then these little up and down arrows, I believe, take us to our various levels. Or you can click and pick which level you want to go to. Oh, you can also turn lighting off or on at the click of a button. you can change whether the lights do shadows so overall I think dungeon draft is faster to make your map and I think dungeon painter studio is a little bit more customizable especially if you want to change something you did later on such as put a building in a different place than you want the building still my biggest complaint with Dungeon Draft is this building's placement is 
not changeable. I can't just grab the building and move it to the other side of this pond. If somebody does know a way, let me know in the comments below. I will be glad to know that I'm wrong. Um, both, t both tools have a way to add text to your map. your text, change your font, change your font color, oh, that one looked kind of like a JRPG kind of font, anyway, text labels, both tools have text labels, so I believe they're right here. That reminds me, there is one more thing Dungeon Draft can do that I kind of wish Dungeon Painter Studio had, and that is the Path Tool. So let's zoom in. Let's grab this blood. I'm gonna. Click to start the path, and then click in different spots to turn this. I'm going to switch this to transition out fade. wonder if it will actually fade. No, it doesn't. So let's start a new one. Alright. So we can draw a nice little path closest thing Dungeon Draft has to that is this spline tool which you can click and draw a path but it literally just draws a line you don't have different art assets for the spline tool in this I don't find myself using this or even the path tool terribly often but as you can see here it's pretty cool for things like setting up a horror scene or setting up a mine cart. I'm not sure why would you use it with a dock, but you know, you can use it to give a dock a little bit more character than just being in a straight line. You can even turn stairs. So, some pretty cool things you can do with the path tool. Alright, building tools, wall tools, let's see, is there anything? You, know, you can do a roof Roof tool, will build your roof. Dungeon Painter Studio just treats roofs like terrain, where one of these is roofs. Draw your roof, draw your other direction roof so you've got some different options with the roof tool on this uh, material brush kind of works like the water brush except it's other various effects and materials which can be painted at different layers unlike the terrain brush which is stuck at the terrain layer and the water brush, which is stuck at the water layer. This one has a move to front option. But only a couple materials to pick from at the moment. So covered that. Light effects, levels. Both tools have a way for you to take, say you doodled a map at home and you wanted to draw it. You could scan it in and in Dungeon Draft you click Trace Image. You pick the file you want to load to trace. Let's see if my file explorer ever loads. Might be having 
trouble with all this other software running. you would load the file here and it would show up you drag it similar to comparing levels except you cannot see this image file in an export when you export the map it does not show whatever image file it just uses this as a sort of underlying layer to trace your map on top of I'm experiencing some kind of bug with loading that, but I've never and I've never seen that bug before. It's probably just because I have two different mapping softwares open, along with the auto recording, audio recording software, and screen recording software. All right. Now, Dungeon Painter Studio can do something similar. You can load a template, which I've got some uh, templates here. Grab a template, draw it onto the screen. Now, the difference here is this creates the template as an object. It will show up in exports, it can be moved to any other layer. You can have its opacity changed. It's an object, just like everything else in Dungeon Painter Studio, so it's subject to all the other settings. Rotate it. Move it, add effects to it. Granted, it adds effects to the entire object, not to things within the object. Alright, so that's the tracing tool, text tool. Oh, I felt like there was something else. Oh, adding an asset. I would consider adding an asset to be an advanced option. But if you Dungeon Painter Studio, if you want to add some art that you have, you can go up here to add custom art. In this case, it wants to create a subfolder because of where I'm at. So let's go back to objects. I happen to have created a custom object folder where I've uploaded some random things I've created for testing. So then you would click your add custom art, click browse. Go to your art folder, grab your art, click open, pick how much of this art you actually want to show up, it's like a cropping tool, and choose how wide and tall it is in units. So I'm going to switch this down to let's see I'm going to put that down to 1 by 1 and I'm just going to leave it untitled and click save the folder and now I have a potion it's in the folder it's there I can place it and I can treat it just like every other object. I happen to have made this particular thing using Affinity Designer on my iPad. But really easy to add individual objects. Dungeon Draft is more complicated, I think, to add art. Go here to Assets. You can create art asset folders. If 
but I think you have to create entire packs. Let's see. If I go to this. Yeah, see, I cannot pull the individual pieces of artwork down. Um, there are separate links all over YouTube with tutorials for how to create and upload your art assets to Dungeon Draft. I'm not going to cover that in this video. I'm not going to cover that in this video. And I think that about covers the comparison of the two. If there's any other tools you'd like to know about, or you'd like me to go further in depth on, let me know, and I will see what I can do there. Other than that, um, enjoy. Other than that, have fun making your maps.